Hello, welcome once again to Land Rover Toolbox videos. Four pin relays, they look quite similar, they do a job, and we have one that I've just taken out. Now, I want to show you something. The schematics on the black one here that I'm pointing out, this is the switching coil, and there's something missing on the diagram which this has. Now, this is actually a resistor which uh, stops surges. When you switch off your switch, the coil can generate energy and as the field collapses it can send a surge blowing your light bulbs so always fit like for like <laughs> Okay, for this tutorial we're using a simple voltmeter to check for voltage drop you don't need anything else possibly a set of leads that is in good condition and what we're going to do is show you you can see here the difference in power in the light bulb from discovering a voltage drop on a certain circuit and then going on to find a way of rectifying the fault as you can see the lamp gets brighter Right, so a voltmeter measures the potential difference between positive and negative. You can see here 12.7 volts. Right, so we're going to change this a little bit. And we need to find ourselves a good earth because the battery is too far away from where we're testing. So, first thing we're going to do is put the negative clamp on the negative part of the battery. And then with our multimeter, and you can see the cable stretch through the window. We're going to find this earth here, which is closer, and test it first of all to see if it has a voltage drop. Now, I've put a load on here, a light and the heater, and uh, we have a 0 0.2 of a volt voltage drop, which is very acceptable. So, we can go ahead and use the earth for our test on our headlamps. So, we're getting the headlamps out like so. Remo we've removed the four screws holding it in. And what we're going to do now with our trusty multimeter and a clip or a crocodile clip, we're then going to clamp it on this earth point here. Like I say, we've just tested it, and you'll understand in a little while how to do a voltage drop test on an earth. Right, so this is the earth on the back of the lamp. Black is the uh, UK color code for an earth. It will be different on other vehicles, however, Land Rover use black for Earth. So, what we've done here, and this is just a nominal voltage value, you can see that has given us some sort of a voltage drop, which is 1.65. Right, with these type of terminals, you can um, access the terminals from behind, and this is what we need to do, back entry. And to access them, you just pop the cap off like so and then you've got the connectors very available right so you can see the condition of this one here and the connectors aren't in very good condition and what we find is we have a quite a considerable voltage drop of 3.3 volts basically a voltage drop shows corrosion or resistance in a circuit and the terminals on this light bulb for instance are actually corroded so if I pull this up to the camera a bit more you can see the condition of them not very good this corrosion resistance will show up as a voltage drop so really need a new light bulb in there on the other side this is the offside headlamp um, this is slightly worse because resistance also causes heat and the terminal block has melted it hasn't been replaced, somebody's bodged it in, and the terminals are actually quite corroded. And this initially came up as a 405 volts, a voltage drop on the earth circuit. So there is a fair bit of resistance. Um, the option you can do is to use a uh, connector kit like this, part number you can see, and this is available from Durite. You get three connectors and a plug. Um, new light bulbs obviously, I mean at the price of them it's not really worth cleaning the terminals up, just change the light bulbs. Alright, £10 and it's done. These are standard light bulbs. Okay, so we already have dropped down to 1.64 volts and that's with a fresh light bulb and new terminal kit. So we obviously still have resistance there. 
So we're using our good earth post and what I've done is an eyelet with a cable. Okay, this is actually quite a long piece of cable as you can see here and we're just going to pop it into the connector that I'm using and these are very good connectors. These are um, quick fit connectors if you like. Okay, so I'll push the earth wire in there and then I'm going to take another reading with the positive lead of the voltmeter. Remembering the um, negative side is on the earth post. Right, well I'm actually finding that I've got 0 0.37 of a volt which is very acceptable. 0 0.5 volts is acceptable uh, in a cable. Right, so you can see the difference. Watch the lamp as it illuminates and that is only um, not even two volts difference okay so this is dip beam uh, put a good earth on it and the lights come brighter straight away and this affects both lamps so this is on one circuit as it were next thing to do is either install the wire correctly in the loom or chase out to the next connector and I think the best thing to do is to take it from the earth post to the lamps earth them out with new wire a little bit of heads up here, we started at 12.59 volts, monitoring the battery, and it slowly drops down as you're consuming power with the lights on and uh, testing the circuits. So it's worth keeping in mind that your voltage while you're working will actually drop. You do need to put a load on a circuit to check for a voltage drop, you can't do it any other way. Okay, some systems on the, the power side will actually purposely drop the voltage with a resistor and I'm unsure in this system whether it does it or not. So before fitting some relays to up your voltage on your lamps or even uh, fitting aftermarket lamps, it's worth just checking your earth to make sure that you've got a good earth return. So anyway, I'm going to have a quick look through the cab and just take some readings of some connectors. Okay, here's a uh, layman's explanation. Schematics here tells you what the uh, relay will do. Four pin, it has a coil resistor here, surge protection. When you energize the coil, it will actually close this switch and send power. Okay, when you open it again, this resistor makes sure that the surge doesn't damage anything. Right, so the headlamp relay sits in between these here, which is a three block on the fuse board. What we have black for an earth, which is your trigger earth. You have an, an ignition feed, which is white, only when the key is turned on. You also have the blue for the lighting circuit, and this is powered up only when the lighting switch is switched on. We have voltage there, it doesn't mean the relay is good but it's putting voltage through. Right, now what we have is the lighting switch, and you Defender owners will know where this is. And basically we have a brown permanent feed, we have a side light feed, which is non-ignition, and then the blue wire is only energized when you switch the ignition on via the relay that I just showed you about. This is the dim dip relay, which is behind the gauges. And you can see here, coloured wires, okay, blue, blue traces are headlights and lighting circuit. Um, if you need to know, it's YWC150, which you can get from Bearmark. Okay, it's quite a complicated relay, and let's not get into this because this is not, we're, we're not explaining the lighting circuit. We're just going to have a look um, at a few details. Right, so you see this... Uh, relay is hidden right at the back down there and it, it sits next to the brown relay so here's for a bit of diagnostic etiquette okay you have different types of tip for your test leads you never with a connector push a fat test lead into the front always back probe it okay like so sometimes you will not be able to get into the back of connector and you'll need a, a needle probe like so they're quite easy to get hold of from any electrical suppliers uh, this way you can safely test a connector but if you don't have one of these you could use something like um, a clip or a pin which is conductive so you can take a reading like so saves a lot of money right so what we're going to do is to back probe a connector and this is a white ignition fed okay so this is only powered up when you turn the key into the position where it energizes this circuit or system we've got the multimeter here and i'm going to turn it on the ignition is now on 
and it's reading us some voltage. It could possibly be a bad connection with the lead. Okay, so now we have to switch the um, blue circuit on. Okay, and we can test here. This will be um, live, so wait and see. Turn the uh, switch on, and there we go. We have voltage, and this will be on both sides of um, this, which are the blue wires. Okay, as you can see there. Right, so what we're going to do is take the lead off the negative and put it on the positive. This way, positive to positive, we're doing a voltage drop test. Remembering that we have the lights on and the ignition on, so the circuits are loaded. And what we're looking for is resistance in the circuit. So basically, look, we have nothing there. But moving on to the next one, yes, we have about uh, getting on for half a uh, volt. So there is a slight resistance there, but it's acceptable. This side is the same. We have nearly half a volt. 0 0.5 a volt is acceptable. Now, this one here is a positive feed to the starter, which is the battery feed as well. Now, this is an earth. This should actually come up as a uh, voltage, which is 12 point something. Yeah, 12.3. Okay, so that's a switching earth. It goes to earth. Fine. So you're getting the idea, basically what you're doing is looking around at the system for anything that's actually quite drastic. Now on this side of it, there isn't much um, voltage drop at all, which makes me think that there's a resistor in line somewhere dropping the voltage to the um, headlamps. But I'm going to go on a bit further and see if I can find out. You can see the voltage drop is almost next to nothing. Okay, so there's a little bit of a heads up on the uh, multimeter. Well, it's actually more than a multimeter. This is a graphing uh, voltmeter. I'll turn the ignition on and I'm going to start the engine. You see the drop in voltage there, and then we'll see the alternator start working. This is just reading the battery terminals, okay? This tool is absolutely fantastic. It has a lot of facilities in it, which is for advanced diagnostics. Uh, not so much on early defenders, but however, some of this kit is quite right now so i've just saved a little portion of the reading here and i'll show you um it will tell you the minimum voltage that the battery's gone down to while cranking which is um let me show you here is 8.46 when the starter motor was engaged for a short amount of time you'd never be able to pick this up on a traditional multimeter so moving the uh, cursor around on this uh, recorded piece you can see that the alternate was putting out 14.4 at a certain point there's a good way of testing an alternator and this is with a lab scope set on ac coupling and what we're basically doing is reading the ac part of a signal because the dc has been uh, removed from the signal and we're looking to see if there's any failed diode and this will show up in a waveform once we can get the right waveform, which is voltage over time. This sort of tester has been around for a while. Uh, all technicians should know how to use this sort of stuff. And DIYers, well, why not?